Oh no, not the granddad's allotment. So today I'm going to be uh, pruning some of the fruit bushes and uh, sorting out the espalier apple trees. I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. I'll just walk you over to the fruit area, but one of the things I'm going to do today, I don't know if you can see that very well, but is uh, my fuchsia and it's gone mad. It's probably about 10 years old. Uh, my dad planted that uh, years ago because this used to be his allotment. But I'm going to take, cut that right back and take some cuttings of, of that today. Let's go into the fruit area. Got an espaliered apple tree there. Uh, this is about three years old. Uh, Spartan apple it is. Uh, so I'm going to do it, be doing the summer pruning on that. And another apple tree espaliered. Again, the summer pruning on that today. And then we're we'll going to the fruit cage. Yeah. Into the fruit cage, I don't know if you can see because of the sun. We'll have another espalier apple tree there, which is now getting to the top of the fruit cage. So I need the summer pruning on all of that. Done this year. And I don't know if you can see, that's the door, which I had to get past all of these blueberries, black, uh, sorry, black currants. Um, so I'm going to have a go at them as well. I'm going to take a couple of these out actually. Um, but what I'm going to do is prune them right back and I'll take some, some cuttings um, as well. So I can give them out to everybody else and then I'm going to prune them right down and take them out. And I've then got raspberries to sort across here so yeah today's all going to be about fruit and cuttings so i'll catch up with you in a bit the whole idea of espalying an apple tree is to train it into a, a shape or a pattern that you you require so normally espaliers have one main branch and then they'll have arms coming out either side you can't really see this at the minute with with this because uh, of the, uh, the amount of summer growth but basically what we're going to do, if you can, you can see, this is where it was pruned back, this, this arm, this leader arm, is what we're wanting, which, which is attached to the wire. And that was a fruit and bud. And what we're going to do is cut off above the fruit and bud, you get like a crown of, um, of leaves. So just above the crown, we'll cut there. And we're going to do that to all of these. This is this year's. Sort of spring summer growth we're going to cut all that back off um, and try and train it and shape it so some of these branches which I'll, I'll want to, to train across the wires so i'll tie those in and cut that one off it's the same sort of principle for any sort of fruit uh, when you're pruning you're going to prune off any dead or diseased stuff anything crossing um, but it's quite important that you, you cut off this summer growth um, this has, has fruited, as you can see, there's loads of fruit on the floor there, um, which I, I sort of leave for the wasps and, the, and all the insects, um, the birds and stuff. Um, that's the, the, the drop. Uh, I have harvested this already, so uh, that's just what left, what's left. Right, we'll crack on. Right guys, I don't know how well you can, you can see this, but we'll start with, with this one. So you can see, um, the spur coming off off this arm, this leader arm. And what we're going to do is, is cut off just above where the ring of, of leaves are. And there's, there's one leaf, so we'll leave one leaf on. And just trim off there where the slanting cut so that the water will run off. And we're just going to do that right the way across all of these. So you can see where this, this was fruit and buds for this year. I'm just going to take all these out. I probably want to train that top one up there, so I'm going to get rid of this one altogether. This one I don't want at all. I'm going to take it right back. Tie this one in. 
So, just a bit of string. Tie this one in place. Hopefully that'll take the shape of what I want for next year. Because it's still a grown tip, as you can see it. Because it's still a grown tip. Yeah, so this one I'm going to tie in along the top because I want to train that. So just a bit of string and it'll eventually thicken up and, uh, and hold that shape. But because it's still a grown tip, I'm going to take that grown tip out because I don't want it to spread any further. So that'll stop there. Right, I'll just continue along the rest of the, the plant and come back and show you what I've done. So hopefully you can see the difference of what I've done. I've espaliered this one across here, took off all the the, um, the summer fruiting um, growth right across and you can see the difference between that and the, the other side there. So I'm gonna crack on with the other side and then show you when it's finished. There you go. Hopefully you can see the difference. Taking out all the top growth. So that get out of the sun. Taking out all the top growth, espaliered across each side. This is a, a conference pair. Principles are exactly the same. Um, Try and espalier. Just harvest the last couple of pairs. As you can see, small tree. I had. Um, four pairs off this already and I've got two more these are this one's been sort of attacked and dried up but they are they are nice this tree's only two year old um so there's not much to espalier across um but we'll we'll work at it we'll work at it we'll, you know it's not a problem this this vine that you can see going across the top that's a um a kiwi fruit which I'll uh, I'll just trim up as well Right, I'll just crack on with this. Right, I've trained in the top bit. There's not much to do on the on the pear tree, um, but I've trained in. It's got three, a fork and a, a central one in the middle. So I've. I'm, training arms across each one there now uh, but see it's only a couple of years old so um, hopefully it'll look a bit better a bit stronger next year right this beast is what I'm going to tackle next so as you can see it's probably about 10 foot high the fence line there is about six foot and I don't want it any anywhere above that uh, and it's starting to encroach and come out from the fence sort of towards me so that's gonna gonna be trimmed right back right I'll show you when I finish so what we're aiming for is, is to look at things like like this this is crossing and coming outwards I don't want any anything coming out so they're gonna go you can see where it joins um, the main leader and then you've got your crown of um, leaves there. One leaf past that, and then that'll uh, that'll show fruit next year. I'll just show you that again. You can see from this one, this is going to cross cross over here. That one wants to come out. I don't want anything crossing. You can see where it comes. It's going to shoot from from there. So we'll take that out. And we just go right along the whole tree. If there's anything in, the, in a, a place where you don't want it, take it out. You see the crown of 
um, leaves. One leaf there. I'll leave one leaf on. That's a bit long, that one actually, but we'll go for it. Right, I'm just going to go through the whole tree. Right, guys, I hope you can see the difference. Now trained in a spalliate across um, to just short um, spurs for next year's fruit. Right, let's crack on with the rest. Right, guys, I hope you can see the difference. You can actually see the sky. Pruned it down right to probably about five foot. Right the way along. There's actually two trees in here. Um, one in the middle, which is a spalliard both ways, uh, and one on the end, which is a spalliard towards the right. Um, but I've done a, a hard back prune this time because uh, I was getting and sort of encroaching over over the fence. So I want to try and train it a bit more. Um, didn't have much in the way of fruit on it this year. But I have got one, which isn't quite ready to go yet because it's not fallen off. Um, this in here was a blackcurrant bush, uh, which was a spalliard, which is just taken over, so that's going to come out. Um, and I'll put maybe something in here. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to get rid of most of my blackcurrants because uh, I'm just not using them. I uh, prefer the red currants. It has exposed the fig tree. I did, this is probably about three years old, and I did notice I've got a fig for the first time. First time ever. We've got figs, and quite a few of them. And this is just being exposed. There's another one, it's just spotted another one over there. So I'm going to concentrate on the fig tree. I did have in here, uh, down there, a goji berry. A goji berry, which has not done anything, and it was just grown, and it was just, well, this is it. I mean, it is grown, but it's just not doing anything. It's just put on, it's far too much growth. It's just whippy twigs, and it was just taking over everything. So that's coming out. I'm not any fruit of it, so that's coming out. And what's left in the corner there is a raspberry, which I'll espalier across this way towards the fig tree. So that's cleared up a little bit. Um, you can see the bed was covered in bindweed, uh, and it was starting to grow up the apple trees, which was it probably knocked it back a little bit. So that'll all be getting cleared out. But you can see what I've created. Um, it looks drastic, it looks drastic, but it'll re it'll, it'll come back, uh, it, it does every year. These two trees are probably six years old. I put them in when I first took over the allotment from, from my dad, uh, so probably about six years old. Uh, they fruit nearly every year, um, apart from this year where I'm only getting one, uh, but I did get attacked quite a lot by... Um, by um, bugs, you know, uh, ants and stuff going up it. So, yeah, that's the apple tree pruned. Let's get on with the, the black currants. Now the black currants, they're a little bit different. Um, you want to create a, a goblet shape for, for black currants and they fruit on um, the old wood. So you need to keep the new shoots for next year. I don't know if you can see, this is quite green and pale, so this is a new shoot. Where's the poster? That's a little bit darker. Um, that's last year's growth, so that's what you want to be sort of pruning out. Um, again, you want to try and create a goblet shape, so anything that's crossing, uh, diseased, um, you know, or damaged, needs to be taken out. But these are all going to come out right back to the ground, because I'm going to uh, replace these with raised beds. So. I'm going to take them back, but what I am going to do, I'm going to take some of these um, hardwood and softwood cuttings and I'll show you how to, to, to use those. So I'll quickly slow, show you as an example of what we want to try and achieve. I've, I've cleared a little bit back so you can see a bit better. But what we want to try and do is open up these, you can see for the sun, but there's two plants here and they're too close together. 
and I just merge in one. But what take this this plant as an example. Um, the older wood is the, the darker wood. As you can see, this one is slightly darker. But we'll have got things crossing over. And that's no good, we want to open that up. So what we'll try to try and do is take out those ones that are crossing over. So we want to clear out the centre as much as we can. This shoot here is going inwards. So that wants to come out. These two here are going through the middle so because we want to create that ball shape that one's going to come out as well so what we've done we've opened up this ball shape this one is going to go across so we'll probably take that one out as well And then that one. So what we're doing is opening up this bowl shape. But like I say, I'm going to take all these out right to the ground anyway. So catches in a bit. Right, so as you can see, I've cut all the black currants back. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five black currants in this little area, and just far too many. So I'm probably going to keep it down to one. So these ones are going to come out for next year and I'm going to have a raised bed in here. Uh, the autumn fruit and raspberries, they're coming and you can see they're grown on this year's wood. Um, whereas the summer fruit and ones are, are grown on the old wood. But I have autumn fruit and raspberries. You can see there's some coming on this side as well, some, some yellow ones. And this is all this year's wood, this was just planted this year, this this bay. Um, so yeah, not doing too bad. Thinned it out a bit. There's a uh, current bush here, which I'll uh, sort out. But yeah, the current bush at the end here, I'll probably, probably leave just as one, one bush. And then going along here, I've got open raspberries. Uh, this one, uh, that one there is a Japanese wineberry. Uh, but I've just cut most of it back. Yeah, getting there. Right, I'm gonna show you how to do some uh, some cuttings of some blueberries. Right, what we're gonna do is a few cuttings from the black currants. Um, I've just pruned. I do this every year, just to generate a few more and give give a few away and stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's free at the end of the day. So we've just got some everyday compost. It's just normal. Everyday compost. It's been sitting out in the rain for a, for a while, so it is a bit wet. So we'll just fill a pot. Normally we only do a couple of pots, and then I can split them off once they're rooted. Normally take. What I normally do is um, give the ones away that I did the year before. So this thing last year. So these are the ones I did this thing last year. You can see there's a few haven't taken, but the rest have. So I take them out of there. Well, you can see. We should have a, a root ball on each on each one, so they can be split up and given away. So I do that every year. It's dead easy to do. Look at the compost. You get your cuttings. There's two two ways to do it. You can take the, the new soft tip or the older wood. I tend to take both, so cut it in half, 
strip the leaves back. We only want a couple of leaves on. What I tend to do is just a bit of a scrape. Stick it into the compost. So that's the hardwood ones. Well, you can see it's not as, you know, it's, it's a bit harder, it's, it's not as whippy. So strip off the leaves, you'll see the buds. Leave a couple on. Scrape till you get down to the green wood a little bit. Stick them in. If it's a shaft, new growth, new tips again. Take it down, see where the buds are. A little bit of a scrape. And I'll also take out the, the top growing tip. That's the softer odd ones. You don't need to worry about um, you know damaging when you're ripping the leaves off because you want to expose a little bit of the green underneath anyway to generate the roots. You don't need too many leaves. They'll probably die off during the winter anyway. Um, but what we want to do is try and generate a bit of root growth so we don't need too many leaves on. And that's a bit bendy, so I'll probably not use the bottom of that one. Leave a couple of leaves on for the photosynthesis, but that's all it needs really, just a couple at the top. I'll do eight. Keep it a bit even. So even if I get six out of the eight, um, you know it's six free plants. Um, you know if you want to buy blueberry bush, even sort of bare rooted, you want to spend at least a couple of quid, aren't you? So there you go, six free blueberry plants. There you go, six free blueberry plants. A little bit of a water, the soil is really wet anyway. A bit of a water. I'm going to shut that place till next year. You'll have something like this. What I'll come back to. So you can split up these. There you go. Fully rooted blueberry plant for free. So I'll put them up. Stick them at the front gate and give them to anybody that wants them. Right, I've finished with the uh, black currant cuttings, so I'm going to take a few fuchsia cuttings now. I'll show you what I'm doing. So, this is the fuchsia bushes. You can see these are probably about 10 year old. Um, Dad planted them years ago. Uh, that one's more of a bush uh, fuchsia. Uh, quite prominent with the, the flowers. This one's a little bit uh, bigger, 
but they're both getting getting way out of hand um, so I'm going to take a few cuttings so all I'm basically doing is I'm going to take some good good long cuttings and I'm going to cut them up into uh, into smaller cuttings right I'll show you when I'm finished all right guys there you go as you can see I've been a bit drastic with it but normally when you, you prune a few say you want to be taking about a third away I'll probably take about two thirds away um, but it will recover there's, there's no doubt about that um, it was just getting too big uh, to get past the path and stuff so what I'll probably do is is take away these leaders here so that I'm just growing up this this main one here uh, it has got the grapevine coming from in there as well, I don't know if you can see. But yeah, right, let's take some, some cuttings. So, the cuttings themselves, I'm going to take take from these uh, just branches I've, I've cut off um, the fuchsias. But first of all, I'm going to mix up the compost. Now normally, um, there's two ways you can do it. You can use... Um, just pure um, pure light of a make light uh, and just put them in there because they don't really need any nutrients because uh, all they're doing is generating the roots and then you'll pot them on or you can put them on uh, in a bit of compost and a bit of a make your light or perlite uh, a, you know a, a very aerated mix um, and then you can put them on in, in, in the pots from there so I'm going to show you both ways so I couldn't get any perlite this morning, so I've had to get some perlite. So I'm just going to fill a couple of pots up with the perlite, and that's all you use. Yeah, in it, soaked. I'm going to do two ways, and but the majority of them I'm going to use uh, in pots, and just do one in each pot. Um, because that way it, it saves you pot them on a little bit later you tend to give them away straight away so in here i've just got normal uh, compost and i'll probably do 50 50 mix of uh, make your light to, to compost so i'm going to do two just in the uh, never make your light and the rest i'm going to do in and the 50 50 mix. This is quite wet anyway, this compost, because it's been sitting out in the rain. So it's just going to give her a nice free draining aerated mix so you don't need too much nutrients you'll get that when you when you pop them on into your bigger pots and you, and you get that compost so let's fill a few of these and show you how we're going to get on tend to tamp them down if you can don't force it, just tamp it. You don't want to sort of be too solid. You want to get rid of some of the, the air as well. Right, that'll do for now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to soak these in the water, but to um, to get the water into them. Okay, I'll come back in a second. Right, what we're going to do is do some cuttings. I've soaked the, the vermiculite. light. See the water running out. Just to, and what, what I'll do, I'll keep that, keep it in a water bath once I've finished. The other thing I've got is um, a little bit of rooting powder. You don't need much. 
don't um, be tempted to just dip it in the pot because that can contaminate it and it can go off eventually so I tend to just put a little bit in a, in a little pot uh, to use it. If you haven't got any don't worry about it um, it's it's not really necessary but it does it does help so let's uh, see what we've got here there's a couple of different ways to do this you can have hard cuttings and soft tip cuttings I mean, from from what I've got here I've been to generate loads Just taking some some cuttings there from a branch. Let me see what I've got. So the slightly harder cuttings we're going to take from the bottom. Now you can either use a pair of snips or um, a sharp knife. take the cuttings and all we're going to do is remove the bottom leaves probably want to leave a couple of leaves on the top if the leaves are too big you can always half them so all we're going to do into the rooting powder that's enough for what you need in the vermiculite down the side of the, of the pot make a little hole just pop it in so again strip off the bottom few leaves because they'll just rot off anyway if the leaves on the top are too big down a bit. You only need a couple of leaves for photosynthesis. This will um, it'll uh, start rooting in a you know a couple of weeks anyway. So when I'm doing it this way, I tend to put them in the corners of the pot, and then it's easier for the for the separating pot on. So they're all hard tip cuttings, or hardwood cuttings. Because I'm not on the soft wicky bit. And you don't need much. You know, you only need a couple of leaves. You need a couple of a couple below the surface. And a couple still growing on the top. That's got a, a growing tip on the top and a flower. Don't know if you can see that. We don't need the flowers, we don't need the growing tips. Take them off. India rooting compound. It will just stick in the corner, but I think I'll just push a, a little bit of dowel in. Again, take the leaves off. Cut your leaves in half. Compound, dust it off. There you go. So that's four fuchsia plants already. So this is the soft tip, the grown tip. It's just the same. Take the bottom leaves off. It's got flowers. Just pull them off. It's not gonna. We don't want the flowers. We want it to generate. You know, want all the, the goodness to go into the, the mating of the roots. If it's got a grown tip, take that out. So the ones in the vermiculite will we'll need the pot on, you know, once it's rooted, because there's not any nutrients in there, but it's quite easy because the vermiculite just falls off. So you can get to the roots quite easy, they're not. 
go and tip in there, so I'll take that out. Soft, what, soft tips on this one. Flowers off. Leaves off the bottom. Trim the leaves down. Take off the shooting tip. Bit of compound. You don't have to be, you know, gentle with them. Flowers off. Because we don't want the flowers to take any goodness away from the roots. Again, there's a couple of flowers in the top of there. So these ones, I'm just going to do one per pot and these will grow on and I'll not need to pot these on as quick. A couple of leaves into the hormone, into the middle of the pot this thing. Again, this is quite wet. So. I'll just push these ones in because the, the soil is a little bit looser. I got down. Right, I'll uh, I'll leave it there. Right, we've got them all potted up. What I do is I transfer them into a little box like that, and they're all in. Get the water, put the lid on. That's a little greenhouse for for them to uh, to start off in, and that's it. Right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something um, from what we've been doing today, and we'll catch you in the next one. See you later.